Hello and good morning once again. America held hostage. How many days is this now? I've, I have lost count. I, I, I'm having a big problem figuring out what day it is. You know, it's so funny you mentioned that. Yesterday morning when I woke up, it's Monday morning. I thought it was Sunday. I didn't show because we didn't do anything on Easter Sunday. I mean, really, we didn't do anything on Easter Sunday. So I uh, woke up Monday morning thinking, wait a minute, what day? God. Seriously, but you got to check your calendar. This is Tuesday, April the 14th, and we See? are glad to have you with us this morning on Exiles TV. I'm Bill Perfita. He's Kevin Gallagher. Hi. And uh, we got uh, we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, Leo Honeycutt, who has been following the numbers and, and how they chart out, who also covers the Capitol as an independent uh, news producer, is going to talk about how our numbers stack up with what's happening in New York, because the curves are very similar. Mm -hmm. They're just off by about 24 to 36 hours. And what he's hearing in terms of when we might start reopening things. Leo always has some very, very good insights because he's a real facts and figures guy, mm -hmm. and he'll be able to lay it out for us. I'd also be interested in you know, seeing comparisons. In New York, is it mostly in that city? Or is it, are there significant numbers of cases across the state? It's a big state. Uh, same thing with Louisiana. How, how, how is the distribution? We know that Orleans Parish, particularly hard hit, but how are the other parishes doing? Well, you know, it's interesting. I was looking at that uh, uh, last evening. Uh, and uh, Orleans and Jefferson have the highest rates of everything, and they're almost identical. Mm -hmm. uh, and then right after that, you get in terms of gross numbers, Caddo. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of per capita height, you get St. John and St. Charles. So that area around New Orleans, uh, with the exception of Plaquemines, I mean, they have COVID, but it's not an extremely high rate. Baton Rouge has actually done fairly well in terms of how the stats shake, shake out. Uh, Caddo and Bossier bloomed late, uh, but Caddo boomed, uh, uh, bloomed pretty well. And, and so in New York, what I think is very, very interesting is obviously New York City had just a, a monstrous explosion, explosion, very similar to New Orleans. Uh, and in your big industrial cities, Buffalo and Syracuse, that area, you had some pretty good cases. But up in the Northeast, where it's mostly very small towns, sparsely populated, a lot of farmland. Yeah. People don't realize how much farmland there is in New York. Not oh, yeah. so much. And some, sometimes great distances between towns. But, you know, I, I, I was thinking about, um, I, I like to watch the map because it gives me a good snapshot. Mm -hmm. And for a very long time, North and South Dakota had no cases. Well, it finally made its way there with a few cases and walked right into that Smithfield packing plant. Right. And now you've got, what is it, 59 confirmed cases, three dead, a number of people in the hospital. The, I think it is the largest packing plant of meats in the Midwest shut down indefinitely, you know, which is, which is going to cause some disruptions in the food chain. But oh, no doubt. It took one person getting to North Carolina with the disease and coming into that plant and boom. Another thing it's going to cause is, I think, two, twofold. This could be tr big trouble for Smithfield. Smithfield was one of the biggest American companies. It's no longer an American company. It's now owned by Chinese interests, mm -hmm. even though it operates in America. And there's some weird, i, I, I got to get my facts straight on this. So they, like, take the pork and then send it to China and then package it and then send it back. I don't know exactly how they do it, but uh, um, there's going to be people reluctant to buy pork products because they're going to be worried about uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. There's going to be people that don't want to buy Smithfield products because they now know they're Chinese. Mm -hmm. Smithfield, I think, says they have 300 employees that have tested positive for COVID-19, which is a lot. This is a huge operation. Did you see the photo of it? Yeah, it's monstrous. It's, it's, like, a, it's like an automobile manufacturing plant. Yeah, it's monstrous. Sprawling. That's the best term for it. You're right about that. Um, and, you know, this could be... This could be bad news for Smithfield in general. Now, you know, you may be watching saying, why do I care? Uh, maybe, maybe you don't. Maybe there'll be more to fill the hole. But anytime we have a food producer that's in danger of going out of business, if you don't think that's going to affect the food, food chain in general, 
as opposed, uh, uh, you know, in addition to more specific ways, guess again. Well, and you know, part of their product line, I don't know if it's packed at that facility, part of their product line is considered to be the most premium pork product, mm -hmm. and it's served in a lot of restaurants that serve these big, you know, huge pork chops and all that. Yep, Smithfield is also known for their really yummy, yummy pork tenderloins. Yeah, and, and so now Hormel, are they going to pick up the slack? They're the other biggie. You know, you see them side by side mm -hmm. in, the, in the refrigerator you certainly uh, at, at the supermarket. Are they going to be able to pick up the slack? The, but the question overall is the effects of coronavirus on the workplace, places that have remained open because they are deemed to be essential. You know, I'm kind of expecting to see that we, we, we turn up things like a lot of Home Depot and Lowe's employees are going to turn up with the coronavirus. Well, you know Supermarket what? employees. Lowe's, I can't speak for Home Depot. Lowe's has been very, very careful about that with screening. We'll talk about this in just a little bit more. Our first break, we'll be back on Exiles TV. Stick around. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. <laughs> Welcome back. It's Exiles TV. I'm Kevin and he's Bill. So when we left off, we were talking about Smithfield, uh, huge, one of the largest ham and pork processors in the United States, but a China-owned company now. Uh, but if, if this thing threatens them on an essential level, it, it, it threatens the food chain. And you made a good point during the commercial. Well, again, as if our farmers in this country haven't been suffering enough with weather phenomenon over the last few years, you know, it's very expensive to feed hogs. When you are, have an operation, it's time for your hogs to go to slaughter. You need to, they need, need to, them go. to go. Yeah. So if this big processor in the Midwest is shut down, you're gonna have farmers that are already strapped and stretched having to feed these large, large groups of, of hogs for days, maybe even weeks. That's going to put a big dent in them. And they also, they can't, they don't have room for the new, I hate to call them a crop, but they are. They don't have room on their lots for the young ones that they're fattening up for the next round. Right. So the whole thing is very, very complicated. So uh, we hope that Smithfield is able to reopen eventually. The question is when. I think that's the question on every when does thing when do things start to reopen and get back? Well, and, and you know, Kevin, another question is, 
and I hate to say it this way because it sounds like I'm Mr. Doom and Gloom, but the other question is who's next? Their operation isn't that different from Armor or Hormel or, at, or the beef packers or the chicken packers. You've got people working in close proximity. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, uh, and I'm, I, I'm thinking that perhaps these other ones have been a lot more circumspect about screening employees and probably been a little more careful because North Carolina and or North Dakota rather and, and South Dakota really didn't have much to worry about until about a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. They were showing zero cases. But now, but boom, now it kind of explodes. And what I worry about is that if we get coronavirus where it's turning up consistently in the people that handle and process our foods, what's that going to do to us and make us afraid to eat? Are, you know, are, are we only going to eat, you know, prepackaged food? We'll be afraid to eat, you know, fresh meats again for well, a while? Or you know, the, the, the thing is, they, they figure that, and, and accurately so, uh, the one thing that, that, that takes this virus out immediately is, is heat. So they're saying with your cooked foods, Don't you, know, worry. you know, even if somebody at that Smithfield place sneezed on it or coughed on it, as long as you're not eating that pork raw and you're cooking it to a proper temperature, you should be okay. But I'm thinking of all the possible disruptions where there may not be any virus present just because, for example, is it Armour that has that big, big packing plant uh, in, um, was it, Kansas City? You're, you're asking the wrong guy. I think that's it. What if they say, all right, we're going to go to half shifts for the next five days so that we can test everything and check everybody, mm -hmm. which seems a good idea until you figure the millions of pounds of meat that that is not going to produce and the ripple that's going to cost. It's just more things to add to the big economic monster that, that uh, has developed here since we decided to shut things down for this virus. Did we make the right call? I don't know. I guess only time will tell. I mean, I've read all sorts of articles say this is not the way you treat a pandemic. You identify the ill and you quarantine them from the rest of the population. You don't put everybody, you know, through the same thing. You, you know, the, the well should not have to quarantine themselves. It's like, but the one thing we don't have where coronavirus is concerned, excuse me, I got an eyelash that's fallen in my eye. But uh, the one thing we don't have where coronavirus is concerned is adequate testing, testing in great enough numbers, which I guess falls into adequate, and we don't have any kind of a, a vi uh, you know, vaccine. Well, and every American that had a television that five weeks ago, ago saw Chinese police and military dragging people, kick, kicking and screaming from their homes, were saying, well, that'll never happen here. It'll never happen here. And they didn't mean the virus not coming. They meant that we would not forcibly quarantine people. And you know what? It is probably the most efficient way to do it. But I don't know that the American public would stand for that. Well, and... You know, sometimes our friends in law enforcement across the nation don't always do the wisest thing. There's two well-publicized stories. Uh, the man in uh, a smaller town in Colorado that took his daughter out to just kick the ball around. Park was deserted. It's just him and the daughter. Three cops show up and arrest him for violating the stay-at-home order. Uh, there was a surfer on the East Coast. Just him, all by himself, out enjoying the surf. And when he came ashore, Three sheriff's deputies took him to jail for violating the stay-at-home order. It's like, well, are we supposed? Is it social distancing? Are we are we ordered to remain in our homes? And do they understand you can't order people to remain in their in your homes? You can't. Um, and there's there's Bill Bill said it on this program last week. There's no federal or state statute that enables them to order you to remain in your home. Yeah, and and, and nobody's in a hurry to write one. By the way, I might add. Right. All they can do is ask us but you know, to do what's best for society. Another part of this is you have to understand the obvious stress. We want you to enforce it. We want you to help us with this social distancing and stay at home. We want you to help us. But you can't really do anything too draconian. And you got these cops out there going, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? You know, and it's, it's easy to make a mistake. I mean, uh, I think the fifth time... You get called to somebody's house because they got 40 people there having a grand uh, a party for grandma, and you say you all got to leave, and they wave their fingers at you. It, you know, it 
can't bust them all. By the way, the, the police in that Colorado town have apologized for arresting dad in front of his daughter. Not that that helps, but they've, we're sorry. We're so sorry. Well, you know, Glad you didn't beat them, huh? And, and again, I, I hate to say it, but in this state, we've got this goofy reverend up in Central mm -hmm. who's basically giving the ecclesiastical middle finger to the governor's order, mm -hmm. and they're not actually doing anything physical to stop him. So I think the precedent is, has been set. Mm -hmm. Now we are relying on good judgment, and fortunately, most of us seem to have good judgment. Uh, we're going to take a couple of moments and uh, let you enjoy some good judgment for the next few moments. We'll be right back with Exiles TV. Stay right where you are. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Cantea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2 as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUG. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvant. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. back to Exiles TV on this Tuesday, April 14th. Glad to have you along with us. I'm Bill Profita. He's Kevin Gallagher. Now, we're going to digress from, well, I guess this is kind of news of the day because one of the things people have been amusing themselves with is posting their senior picture from high school. And yesterday, Kevin posted his. And I swear to you, under God and all that is holy, he looks exactly like Michael Caine from the movie Alfie. Okay. 
I'm not going to cop to exactly. I'm, I'm not sure I know what you're But I everybody, see what you're when I posted Michael Caine, everybody said, yeah, it looks just like. Can you, can Marty, you get a close up of this, this around, can, can, can we pull in a close up yeah, on you that? Yeah, you got to see if you get a close up of this. Look at that's, that's me. Marty, at, uh, Marty is on it. But yeah. That's me at 17. Now, if he doesn't look like Michael Caine during, uh, during his. Here, let's, let's strike the same cheesecake pose. I was so serious. Now you look like the Kane mutiny. But that looks so like serious. Michael Kane. At, se at, at 17, what did I have to be that serious about? That's a great looking picture, though. Yeah, it is what it is. I mean, I've told people I, I regret that, you know, at, that those days, leisure suits and shirts with big collars, it was all the rage. Had, <laughs> so that's what we were all were wearing. But, uh, you know, if hindsight is twenty twenty, I would have dressed more like I'm dressed now. I would have worn a, a decent collared right. shirt and tie. And you know, everybody smoked then, and those leisure suits were all like seven hundred percent polyester, if you remember. Yep. And if you bumped into somebody with a cigarette in their hand, you turned into a giant ball of plastic. I mean, it was immediate. Boom. Yep. You know, and they have to chisel you out of your leisure suit. But you know, the the the, uh, the senior portrait thing is just one of the many many things that people are. Facebook is helping keep us all from going a little crazy, but they're coming up with more and more interesting ways to keep you know keep you and your Facebook friends amused. And uh, you know, I I was looking at somebody else's, and I realized that right behind me in the bookshelf is my my you know senior class yearbook. So I grabbed it and took a photo and posted it up there. You look like. Do you know where your senior class yearbook is? Uh, I actually found it just the other day. Um, and I used to have one of, you remember that the, the photography company used to sell you the, the sheet of photos. You had like, you know, like three eight by tens, one for each grandmother. 175 wallet size for all the yeah, people and, who don't want a and, picture. And then you. the medium sized ones. And, and I think I have a medium sized one somewhere. Uh, I don't think you all would recognize me. You had, do you have, do, do you have facial hair in your senior class portrait? Uh, I had I had fairly long sideburns. Oh, like, he grew the burns. Like to hear, my hair was dark, 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 dark brown and kind of wavy, and I was wearing big horn rim glasses. Really? Yes. And I, again, I'm, I'm in the. Well, wait a minute! You you don't seem to need glasses now. Well, that's the miracles of modern surgery. Oh, you did you have radial keratotomy? I, I had uh, yeah, I had uh, uh, LASIK actually. I. Uh, uh, I, I wore contact lenses from, I got my contact lenses the day after I graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of one of those odd stories, but I had a perfect fit and I never wore them. I had the same pair of contacts on my eyes for 31 years. Never lost one, never needed a refit. Really? Yeah. And so when I went to go and have the LASIK, I had to go without contacts and wear my first pair of glasses I had owned uh, for about three months before they could actually, because my cornea had been reshaped uh, by, the, contact by the contacts. But anyway, I had, I had on an Edwardian suit and uh, it, it was, uh, God help me, it was a golden brown shirt mm -hmm. and it had a matching stripe in the tie and the the Edwardian suit jacket was that deep hunter green. It was like. Yeah. Yeah. The photographer in, encouraged us all to look very pensive and serious and, you know, thinking about the future, you know, look over my shoulder as if it's that's your destiny. Now, that sort of thing. One of the things that I am proud of that I managed to make it to this age without is I never owned a Nehru jacket. <laughs> Neither and, did I. And I never owned a leisure suit. Really? Really. I could see you as the kind of guy that'd say, nah, not a leisure well, and, and you were also, you're a few years older than me, so by, you know, by the time the leisure suit was in, you were a grown man, you were out of school. I was, yeah. Uh, but you've never been really a slave to fashion fashion. No, no. I, you're I, more I, of a classics guy. I, I, yeah, more of the style type of thing. But uh, in my first radio gig, everybody wore leisure suits except me. And 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 they, they I mean and they went all out. They went white belt, white shoes. Okay, let's do some more seventies. Did you wear plaid pants? Oh yeah. 
Yeah, plaid. We all wore plaid pants. Bell bottoms. You know, now it's like I would never, I wouldn't be caught dead in a pair of plaid pants. But we, we put, we put them on, wore them everywhere. I had a pair of, I had a pair of plaid baggies with cuffs that were two inches. Deep oh, I remember the big the cuffs. Those. Because and you wear to, them with platform shoes. They had to stay above your platform shoes. Yeah, exactly. The seventies were a we unfortunate all, time for men. We all walked. Like we had a bad day on the baseball practice field and caught a ball where you're not supposed to catch one because of those because <laughs> of those platform and shoes. Fall off our platform shoes. And, and did you uh, did you ever wear any of the uh, Saturday Night Live Kiana shirts? You know the shiny shirts. I had one that was given to me for Christmas. I loved it because it was so fashionable. Wore it out to a teen dance one weekend. Got sweaty. Never got the stink of onions out of that shirt ever again. Something about that fabric and then sweat. Oh. There's some kind of a, and I mean, you could wash that thing with the finest products available, and that shirt was going to stink like onions forever. Those shirts, the fabric did not come from a plant or an animal. It came from deep within the bowels of the earth and probably very, very low on the tower at Exxon. I mean, th those things were, when you talk Petroleum about... Petroleum products. <laughs> when you talk about synthetic, they were synthetic, let me tell you. And it was all the, I mean, all the rage, synthetic fabrics in the 1970s. Did you ever have a neck chain? Oh, there, it, look at the, the photo carefully. I'm actually wearing one in the in the. Uh, oh, okay. I, Do I need to... No, we don't want to see that again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I had a little little neck chain. Neck chain? I... Uh, I, I was fond of those. Uh, I had one that's not in that photo, but it was actually puka shells. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> like a kid in north, a kid in northeastern, <laughs> northwestern Pennsylvania is going to have any connection with puka shells? Puka whatsoever. shells, just crazy. Just anything we thought looked cool. So, in, and, uh, in, I, I, you know, bell bottoms and with uh, low-rise jeans with a fly that was only two and a half inches long. In in the in the five days of summer you had, did you ever wear like the surfer shirts? You know the the big horizontal stripes, and they had no collar. But no, they had that two wasn't buttons. that wasn't one for me. That was uh, Beach you know, Boys I'm, style. I was mostly just straight up t-shirts, usually with uh, the rudest graphics that I could possibly get away with, um, names of bands and things like that. Mm -hmm. you know, I would always look for the kind of shirts that looked like you'd been to a rock concert, but you hadn't. And so you, you know never say you never smoked cigarettes, right? No, never. I never developed a taste for tobacco See, cause, at all. Because with your long, flowing dark hair. If you greased it back a little bit in a DA and had that Marlboro hanging out of your mouth. I would have made a good hood. Oh, and left left arm on the window as you're driving by looking at the girls. I'm, I'm, see, I'm seeing that. Jay Grimes told me that uh, he had glasses uh, like mine, the aviator type style frames. Mm -hmm. He said, but he didn't go with the tinted lenses because that meant you were, you know, like, you know, a druggie. <laughs> And I said, well, what mine told, what we're saying to people is the clip-on sunglasses really make you look like a nerd. I mean, uh, clip-on well, sunglasses were the worst. And they wouldn't fit those big teardrops. It'd stop about here. No, when photo ray lenses came out, I was all about them. Wore them for years and years and years, too. They never got dark enough or light enough. I, I, ever. I never, I never had those. Never mm. did. But, oh, I couldn't wait to get rid of those glasses. My God. Yeah, I wore contact lenses for years and years, and then... Got a, a LASIK surgery uh, as a radio deal. You know, mm -hmm. hey, we got a LASIK client. You want to get your eyes done? Never knew, you know, how uh, that was wonderful. But the thing about them is, I don't know if you, you want to say the LASIK wears off, but your eyes continue to degenerate. And so now I'm at a point where reading glasses are necessary. If I want to read this page on my computer, I've got to put well, reading glasses on. I had, I had with my. Uh contacts a 2015 correction it was that good mm -hmm. so with the lasik although i was very pleased with it i was not 2015 i was 2020 and i have started now to slide off of that a little bit and i do need reading glasses but like under these lights i won't need them i can read fine print as long as there's lots of bright light when i'm at home and it's kind of low light or late in the evening that's when the reading glasses go on. Yep. Mine I, is to read anything I have at all. I have developed an assortment of reading glasses. You know, I can watch television, go to movies, but anything that's closer than three feet to my face, got to put glasses yeah, They're, they're kind of like my mood ring. Yep. Do you ever have a mood ring? Yes. 
wow, <laughs> you're just ticking all the boxes here. Yeah. I mean, you were a pop. Culture. I had an MIA bracelet. You were a pop culture <laughs> icon, man. I, I mean, if, it, if if we did it in the 70s, I had a, you know, when I was a kid, I had a Snoopy doll. You know, the, I didn't have a teddy bear when I was a, when I was a child. I had Snoopy. That was my, my huggy when I slept with. This is, you know, I was just a little pop culture monster from, from Jump Street. <laughs> well, you are a pop culture icon, and I still think you look like Michael Caine. When we come back... <laughs> Leo Honeycutt. And, oh, and Leo, his early days on TV, the flowing hair, the leisure suits, the mm -hmm. neck chains, the bell bottoms. I want to see, see Leo's senior portrait. He had it all. No, no Le you don't, he says. <laughs> Leo's senior portrait is panoramic. <laughs> <laughs> but all that and more than in our second hour. The financial impact, not just to business, but to individuals. Helen Graff. Uh, the principal of Graf Financial here in Baton Rouge uh, will join us to talk about both the macro and the micro and the economics of this situation. So a lot more to come on Exiles TV. Stay with us. We'll be back after this quick break. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. That's right, the Clarence Bug Show is back, along with the Exiles, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher. We've put the band back together, South Louisiana's talk team, and it's only on the Pelican. 10 a.m. till 12 noon, right here on the Pelican. No! the feeling. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent, with nationwide buying power. Hello, guys. It's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Exiles from what you ask, exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Profita, he's Kevin Gallagher, and they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. Up to 
my turn again. Hey, hey welcome turn. back, Exiles TV. I'm Kevin. This is Bill. And uh, joining us on the set now, we're going to talk uh, a little bit more about uh, CV19. Are we, are we, are we going to be hip and break it down, make it CV19? Not yet. Okay. All that, right. Because that's an actual aircraft carrier. It's a marine amphibious oh. carrier. Well, CV-19. then, the hell with that. Yeah, they uh, wouldn't like that. They wouldn't like that. Leo Honeycutt joins us uh, live. Another exile. Another ex but your, yours is kind of self-imposed, though, wasn't it? Uh, well, yeah, I like... Say, well, I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really true. It's better if it's your choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I, I suppose it is, but the result's the same. You're looking very, very healthy, though. Well, Feel you good? are, too. Yeah. Y'all are, One of the things... And that, you sound great. Thank, thank you. Thank you. One of the things you've been doing, and I might say doing it quite well, I admire the way you're doing this, mm, thank is you. you've been keeping up with the facts and figures of the coronavirus... You have been at every Capitol news conference that has happened, mm-hmm. uh, and you've also got except yesterday the governor was in Monroe. In Monroe, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and and you've got people in the Capitol that I know you have uh, their ear, and, and and you learn things. And and statistically, we seem to be almost identical to New York. Is that a, is that a fair statement? Mm, no. Um it's close, but no cigar. I mean, New York is run away with it because of the concentration of the population, obviously. But in Louisiana, Orleans is the concentration of the population, and the reason why it's an event is because of Mardi Gras. Mm-hmm. Now, if you 60 Minutes just did a story uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I don't know if you got a chance to see that, but they went back and they examined what happened in China leading up to that point. Mm-hmm. And President Xi over there knew about the coronavirus outbreak long before anything was ever done, and he knew it up until January and still allowed five million people to leave Wuhan province and distribute across the world five before he put the shutdown in. So some people could say, well, was that just incompetence or was that calculated? So what that meant is, is that you had a bunch that went back to Italy, massive deaths, you had some that came to New Orleans from Mardi Gras. And so consequently, the outbreak there is for every person that's been tested, one out of four proves positive. And now the state, you know, we have, well, today we will pass 900 deaths. Are we, though, flattening the curve? I believe we are. I believe we are. But the moment you say that, and the governor doesn't like this, the moment you start saying that it looks like we're coming out of the woods, then people say, oh, well, great, we're going to go back out and finally we'll get out of the house. Mm-hmm. Well, the governor was worried that we would have a very non-compliant Sunday for Easter. Right. And I have not seen one way or another whether that has proven to be the case. But if we did have a non-compliant sun- Sunday, it's going to keep us inside a lot longer. Well, and he says April 30. He's got, you know, the stay at home in effect till April 30. Everything that I'm reading and hearing so far up till today, this morning, is that everybody seems to be in agreement with that. You've got the governors from Washington, Oregon, and California are getting together. You've got the New England governors, and they together control about 80% of the population of the United States. So now, of course, there was a big set tee yesterday at the White House, and, and the president said, no, nobody makes that decision but me. I'm the one who makes that decision. Well, yes and no. Constitutionally, that's not really true. Well, and at the very beginning, he said, I'm going to leave it up to the states to decide. Mm-hmm. Right. It's kind of hard to go back now when it's the other end of the coin. Right. What everybody needs to remember is what we're doing is we're doing voluntarily. We, they, they can't order us. They, they, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing that says that they can order you. So we're being voluntarily compliant with what strikes me as a good idea. Yeah. A really good idea. Um, and I normally wear a mask when I'm out, but I, I think that might be a little bit too hard. Where to did say. you find one? Well, I had done some renovation a couple of years ago, and somehow I loaded up on N95s, and I have about five or six of them. Good for you. Hook a brother up. So, okay, <laughs> all right. Well, I'll bring, I should have thought about that. I should have brought you all one. And my wife has made about 100 cloth masks for nurses and nurse assistants. Mm-hmm. By way of comparison with New York City, New York City is a, a big international hub. A lot of people come and go from New York City, plus there's a huge concentration of population. And they say that when this thing started, the people in New York were largely non-compliant. Do you see comparisons to that with New Orleans? Well, it's just much harder to do that in New York. I mean, here we're a little bit more spread out. Uh, and I've been noticing running the, you know, looking at what you, the European Union's doing right now. They're allowing, like, Austria and uh, even Italy's talking about reopening some smaller uh, boutique shops. Mm-hmm. They're letting people get try to get back to work. But my question is, you're letting people try to get back to work. Well, that's going to require customers. 
So what you're doing is you're encouraging people who aren't working to go back out into the mainstream to see the people who are working. So I don't know if that's going to work. Do well, you have hope that two more weeks of this will be sufficient in Louisiana? You know, Kevin, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> I mean, I really, who knows? And the worst thing we could possibly do is to try to get back out there now because we, thank God we're out of the house, and then have some massive relapse that would cause us all to have to go back into quarantine for another two months. I don't think our economy could do that. Well, I, I saw a letter that uh, whoever is in District 1, I keep forgetting who was in the Louisiana House District 1, uh, he wrote a letter to constituents. I believe it's Andy McCormick. Thank you. Okay. Saying, okay, we, we, we're, we're choking to death. We need to get back into operation. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, start writing letters. Start, you know, start talking about how we need to get back into operation. And, you know, again, it, it's from a political pen, so it's going to have a political bent. But I do think that we are going to have to look, and the reason I made the comparison to New York is the peak and the plateau mm -hmm. seem to be closely correlated, even though they have more, much, well, that, well, that's more, true. many more cases. Yeah, that's true. And yeah. obviously the governor and the state legislature there feels, okay, we need to watch this minute by minute to be able to make a decision. Do you have a sense that we're having that in Louisiana as well, is what I was really trying to get to? I think you're right. Yeah, I think we are seeing a, a Cuomo obviously is just ecstatic that they could be reaching a plateau, but he's just like John Bell in that he is saying, wait a minute, folks, let's just make sure a little bit more about this before we throw. And of course, the big the, the push is and where you're between the rock and the hard place. How do you get the economy recranked now? Just today, about an hour ago, uh, the World Bank said we're, we've lost 3% of the GDP of the entire globe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this year. 3% 3, 3 is a huge number. They said this is going to be the worst year since the Great Depression in the 1930s economically. So that's a setback. It's going to take us possibly years to come out of this. But the quicker everybody wants to jump back into the pool, and I understand that, but the quicker we can get it recranked, the less pain we're going to see with unemployment later on down the line. And I understand that. But which is worse, unemployment or more people in the hospitals that overload the system and they die because they can't get ventilators? Well, after you're gone, Helen Graff, who is a financial analyst, is going to be with us. And one of the things that we do have in our toolbox is right now, since this is affecting the largest economies in the world, we can all just print money. Because you don't have to worry about where the dollar stands against the yuan, or the yen against the yuan, or the euro <laughs> against the dollar, because everybody is in the same boat economically. So one of the reasons the president was able to put this, whatever it is, $5 trillion package as the first go round mm -hmm. is because we can go to the printing press because everyone else is going to go to the printing press too. So we may not have to have economic losers that are quite as bad on the world scale or on the national scale as would happen if you didn't do this stimulus, if you didn't go and go ahead and print money. Now, if you're the only nation printing money, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the pictures from Germany before Nazism. Where yeah, they're the bringing, Weimar Republic. Yeah, they're, they're bringing a wheelbarrow full of Reich, Reichsmarks to get a loaf of bread. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But if everybody's printing money, you're all in the same boat, aren't you? Well, yes and no. Uh, the country that's not printing money also holds the largest debt, is the single largest debt holder of paper in the United States. You know who that is? China. China. Mm -hmm. And when you look around your house, half of everything in your house is made where? China. Mm-hmm. And so their workforce is going back to work now. What does that mean? That means they're getting back on track and their GDP is going to crank back up to at least two to three weeks, maybe a month, before the rest of the world can maybe catch up. Maybe 90 days. That's right. Before the rest of the world can catch well, up. That's and right. They, and they may be a full third of that 3% the World Bank says we've lost. True. Mm. So there's an offset there as well. Right, right. So it, it's not... It's not to their interest for the rest of the world to collapse. It's certainly not no. to their interest for the United States to collapse. But if we're coming down to a war on principles, 
Totalitarian communism may still be making a final stand since it failed in Russia. It may be making a final stand to say we can still outlast capitalism. We need a virus to help us do it, a worldwide pandemic. Mm -hmm. We shut down the whole world. We are going to continue with Leo Honeycat, who has been watching uh, the government at a close distance and also all the facts and figures on COVID and talking about what may happen in the future, what is likely. Uh, we're going to put the number up on the screen, by the way. If you want to call in and ask a question, well, we will do our very, very best uh, to answer that for you uh, as we continue. We have a brief break coming your way. There is the number on the screen. You may call it, and we will we will talk to you. We're happy to do so. Continuing with our guest, Leo Honeycutt, on Exiles TV right after this break. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUG. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvat. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling. Nothing could ever bring me down. Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down. Taste the Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Clarence Bug Show. Yeah, I'm back on the air. That's right, 10 a.m. until 12 noon, Monday and Wednesday, and we replay it Monday and Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. to midnight. Check us out online. You can watch it live at pelicansportstv.com, or better yet, why don't you just download the Pelican Broadcasting app? That way you can take it with you anywhere you go. That's right, the Clarence Bug Show. Tell you what, oh, wait, gotta run, gotta go. Bye. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. This is Exiles TV. I'm Bill Perfita. He's Kevin Gallagher. I am. And this is Leo Honeycutt. He Leo, is. Leo, well known. Uh, Another news, exile. <laughs> yeah. A well known news producer, author, uh, television personality. Uh, and he has been really staying on top of the facts and figures and the numbers coming from the Capitol. So he's got pretty good first hand information. Uh, we will take your calls. 225 831 1029, by the way, if you'd like to speak. In, we're talking about the what ifs as we as we move forward with mm -hmm. this. Uh, the governor has announced that he's closing schools through the end of the school year. Is that correct? Which was pretty much expected. Yeah, so yeah. they will announce that today. Two additional weeks to what's yeah, already been exactly. called for. Right, right. But it does blow up the senior class of 2020, and it's yep. it's a Sucks. shame. Mm -hmm. I hate that. You know, um, I'm sure that they'll. I mean, there was one. T there was talk at one point about maybe going if we could get back on track to going through the summer. Mm -hmm. But who really wants to do that oh, now? God. 
Nobody really wants to do that, but here's the problem. Come August, when people are going back to the next grade, how many teachers are going to have to conduct remedial everything? Well, that's the thing. Uh, yeah. the, the big discussion has been, do you automatically announce, uh, advance little Janie and little Johnny from fifth grade to sixth grade? Yes. Well, you know, some of them might not have been advancing had they well, finished up this school year. Yeah, but the numbers that fail the class, they're, they're usually in the smaller percentages. So the question is, are you doing that much damage by socially promoting that small percentage? Well, plus, what do you do with the age group that was going from kindergarten to first grade? You can't double up on the class size. No. So they you're going to have to keep the flow going. It's kind of like you were talking about with hogs earlier. I mean, you got to, <laughs> when the new hogs are ready, the old hogs got to go. And feedlot's a little too full. <laughs> Sorry for the comparison, parents. But Time to go take off your coat. But uh, yeah, I, I've, I've got a niece and a nephew that are, uh, they're going to be, I guess they're going to be seniors this fall. Mm, but they, mm. they haven't been to school since mid March. Yeah. And they're happy about it, but are they going to be at a disadvantage? Well, I, I, I think you have cascading problems and I do think at least in our area everybody's been doing a pretty good job of putting the best face on this in terms of their personal attitudes but there are going to be a lot of train wrecks and a great many near misses in every sector of our life you are going to have parents that are going to be very very upset because a kid that should not have gone from sixth grade to junior high is now holding up the entire class right. because they have to remediate this kid yeah you know and i'm already hearing people saying you know if they're closing schools early uh when do i get the rebate on my property tax that pays for these buildings you know there there are there are a lot of nuances in this there's a lot of it in everything. Everything, Bill. Everything is going to be different. Everything is going to be challenged. I mean, well, don't didn't that what we all needed? We were all rocking along, doing okay, and smiling, laughing, having a great time. There was no problems in the world. <laughs> and I'm being facetious. So now what we're doing is we're throwing in a worldwide pandemic and shutdown on top of the challenge we were already dealing with. Well, and let's not forget, we have got one of the biggest one of the biggest parts of our of our deterrent factor for the south pacific i.e deer leader i.e kamchatka peninsula hmm. sitting in dry dock in guam now yeah. and are sitting at harbor not in dry dock uh with now over 600 of their crew members testing positive for mm -hmm. covid their first death a few hospitalizations and their skipper have been being relieved of duty. What if Dear Leader start, decides he's going to start throwing some missiles in the in the Pacific again, just to see? Hmm. And this thing is not on station because they're all sick. Yeah. I mean, what happens to our? What happens in Caddo Parish, Bossier Parish? Hmm. High, high numbers. What happens if our strategic air command gets crippled by this virus? And they have to stand down part of their ready force because you've got people that are out sick. I mean, Putin is underreporting his numbers. I'm pretty sure about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Moscow's but, still just shut down pretty good. But what, what an opportunity for him to do some saber rattling that could lead to some serious trouble. Well, he's got his hands full with the Saudis right now trying to cut back on oil production. Mm -hmm. He's trying to come out looking like a hero in that. And they're saying that they're going to cut back almost 10 million barrels a day. But now the Saudis are saying, well, actually, Putin said uh, the, that, that number may actually go to 20 million barrels a day. Gapes, that's, well, that's so funny about oil because it was, it, it was the thing that drove the worldwide economy. And now that nobody has any use for it, it's virtually worthless. Well, I don't know about you, but my car is still getting seven days per gallon. <laughs> I haven't filled my tank yeah. in three weeks. And, well, that's the whole thing. Yeah. So again, now I realize that ExxonMobil and some of these are not dependent on this foreign oil, but they're still dependent on the world price. Right. You know, they're, they're clicking along trying to keep producing, but again, if those tanks on Jefferson Highway aren't getting empty, mm -hmm. you know, what are they going to do with their overstock? 
it's going to sit. Yeah, there's almost no place for it to go. Leo, I have a question. It's kind of grim. Um, Good. I like 884 deaths is the most recent official It'll figure. It'll pass 900 today. Yeah, uh, expected to pass 900 and could go 1,000 by week's end. Right. Um, at what? At what point, at what percentage do we say, that's collateral damage, acceptable losses. We've got to get things rolling again. In a state of over four million people, you got a thousand passed away. Most of them were sick already. And I'm not saying this is my point of view. I'm asking. Do you, do you have any thoughts on this? You know, at what point do we say we just can't? You know, I, I realize people are dying, but we we can't let this thing go on any longer. We've got to get back to work. Well, we have to do it in a smart way, <clears throat> and of course, <laughs> for me, that would be a challenge, but. I'm thinking that if we're going to go back to work, we're going to have to have temperature checkpoints. We're going to have to have blood tests for everybody who goes back. We've got to find out. Sounds awfully impractical. Well, it does. But, I mean, how else are you going to try to keep the whole rest of the population safe if, in fact, they're not going to be sheltering at home? Well, in truth, there's been a lot of impracticality that we've managed to adapt to over the last three weeks, yeah, if you think absolutely. about it. Yeah. Absolutely. So I don't think a blood test is that difficult. They're quick, <clears throat> and we have now the, the five-minute, five- to 15-minute test we can do. So I'm not sure why we can't, at the, at the points where people can start feathering back in their workforce, why we can't test people as we go. Well, there, there are going to be adaptations, and we're also going to be at the point where we are going to start to realize things we can do without real estate. Corporate real estate is going to take a big hit everywhere in this country because you've got people now that are saying, you know what? We're operating as efficiently with people working from home. And so maybe we only need half this much office space. Let's renegotiate our lease. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's going to be tough for realtors, but that's only where it starts. That'll be tough for banks. That's going to be tough for... Uh, people who employ a lot of people in the real estate business, but and, and, and you look at it, and I agree with what you're saying, but even before coronavirus, and I think we talked about this last time, I was a little worried because I watch CNBC all the time and I was watch the market all the time, and we see this juggernaut, this tsunami of, of economic collapse headed toward us. So what I was concerned about before coronavirus was is we have shifted the whole paradigm of, of retail in general. We, uh, Walmart came in 30 years ago and cleaned out a lot of downtown areas and mm -hmm. drove a lot of mom and pops out of operation. Mm -hmm. Now, Walmart is under attack from Amazon because you can simply pick up your phone, you can shop online, you can order something, it goes straight from your credit card or your bank Two days to the New York Bank, mm -hmm. and you've never left the house. Now, what you've done is, is you've helped fire a clerk or two or three middle manager box uh, box store goes down because now you can get it delivered to your house and you don't have to go shopping for it at the mall anymore and that's why you see so much mall space so what i'm saying is is that even before coronavirus we were already seeing this whole shift and if you did any any economics work in college you knew keynesian economics was is that if you earned a dollar in a community and spent that dollar it turned over seven times in the community that's right mm -hmm. now if you take the dollar out of the economy you lose seven dollars in the community so it works both ways and i've been really concerned when you drive through louisiana towns now you see so many small towns used to be vibrant economies agricultural economies and now they're ghost towns well and and there's a lot to talk about with that can you stay for one more segment no i've really got to get to the yes of course i can <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break here and then when we come back uh we're, we're going to go through more of this because it will lead in very well uh to helen graff from graff financial we're going to talk about are we learning what we can do without Ugh. in yeah. our cities in our towns and are we also learning that you can't get everything online because they've been oversaturated by this as well. See, that's, that's become a problem as well. We'll be back. This is Exiles TV. Glad to have you. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent. 
Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. Your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Exiles from what you ask, exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Pafita, he's Kevin Gallagher, and they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. back to Exiles TV for hour number two. We convinced him to uh, stick around with us for a few extra minutes to talk about. Where am I going? Uh, yeah, where you got to go? Leo Honeycutt, uh, author and a journalist. He's been covering the governor's press conferences uh, religiously and uh, knows pretty well what the state of affairs is here. But we started a, a rather interesting conversation about the financial and the business fallout from this shutdown that we've all experienced due to COVID-19. Well, and, and you know, I, I, I think what are we going to learn when the dust has settled that we can live without or mm -hmm. do without or do differently? And, you know, I thought it was very interesting. One of the um, one of the CBS This Morning anchors was talking about trying to get into the Amazon food delivery queue. And uh, they said, sorry, it's going to be seven to ten days because we're taking care of the customers who have been with us from the very beginning. Mm -hmm and we do not have the capacity. So you can't do everything online. And, and, and then we also have medicine. I mean, I went through this whole thing 10 days ago mm -hmm. from consultation to prescription to testing to test results with my physician and with her uh, nurse practitioner, without ever seeing them face to face, the only people I saw face to face were the x-ray tech and the lab tech who drew my blood. Telemedicine is going to get a big, big boost from this coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're going to have a lot of primary care ph uh, physicians that you're going to do it all over. The, I mean, they've already got apps where you can look in your own ears and look in your own throats and all that. Mm -hmm. So question is, are we going to adapt to that? Are we going to miss it? Are we going to say, no, I want to see the doctor face to face. I want to see that doctor pull my ear and, and put that otoscope in my ear. Well, I think that's just part of the examination process. I don't, I don't, I don't think. I think there'll be some combination of that. If it's not a serious condition that you have, then I suppose you could, you know, telemedicine that way. But, but if you do have something the doctor needs to see and check up, he can't do that through a, through your iPhone. So you're going to have to go see it. But the point is, there are so many of these things that we're not even thinking of yet. You know, and what these are going to do, Leo, as you put out. Uh, as you posted, uh, posited a few moments ago, 
is we're going to stop moving as much in our communities. We're going to stop buying as much gas. Mm. The insurance companies are going to have to stop charging us less. They're going to have to start charging us less for automobile insurance because we're not in the Using car our as much. Right. The government is not going to collect as much highway use tax revenue off the gasoline pump. The real estate companies are going to see the demand for office space become smaller spaces rather than larger. You know, this... The domino effect. Well, it, it, and Helen's going to talk a little bit about this, but I mean, just from a personal standpoint, I'm worried that we're right now saying, oh, I can't wait to get out, but then you say to do what? You're getting, you know, you're getting your groceries... Spend online. money. Right. You know, you've, you've learned you don't have to go out and buy, you know, some new duds every two weeks. What you going to do? Well, you do have to go see your accountant because tomorrow is tax day. But it's been extended. I know. Yeah. I know. It's, it's been, been extended. July 15th, yeah. And um, the, the accountants aren't seeing anybody in person either. Well, and the government now is throwing out, what, two, three, four trillion dollars, and there's no sudden rush of income from April 15th. Mm-hmm. Yep. So do I hear our smell shut? We had shut down in good years because Congress couldn't decide on funding the government. What's it going to be like now? Well, you know what it does? It gives us more to discuss perhaps in our, one of our next episodes. <laughs> uh, governor's press conference today in Baton Rouge? Yeah, it's back at 3 o'clock, yeah. You're going to be there? Be, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll look for your post. We'll see if we'll needle him again about uh, why the testing has been so disparate around the state. Well, and you know what we haven't said? and I mean we're almost to the end of the segment here is have we had any of those suspect tests that are giving false negatives right I don't know that we've talked about that I don't know if they've shown up here in Louisiana but I know in New York that was a big problem well like we talked earlier you had one out of four that was testing positive in Orleans Parish but that also means you had three out of four who were who were not didn't test positive so you know and that we're seeing that we're see. I think we are flattening the curve. That's the bottom line. But is it time to go out? I think that's pushing it. You think governor's going to have anything uh, to say uh, that's going to be earth shattering today? Well, there's. You never know. I mean, he's just going. He's going to say try to shelter in place for at least another week or two. You know, till April 30, uh, and for I, sure. I know a lot of people are expecting him to extend this thing, but I. I, I think that I have a strong hunch that he's going to let it. Going to let it end on April. I think 30. he's going. Yeah, I think he's going to wait and see how this thing pans out. Leo Honeycutt, thanks so much for uh, being our guest once again. Glad to have you on the program. We'll see you Same again here. soon. Maybe we'll be one back. day we might shake hands again. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe we won't have to do the flap. We'll see you again in a moment. Funky chicken <laughs> on the Exiles TV. Stick around. It's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling
That's right, the Clarence Bug Show is back, along with the exiles, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher. We put the band back together, South Louisiana's talk team, and it's only on the Pelican. 10 a.m. till 12 noon, right here on the Pelican. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Exiles TV returns, and thank you so much for watching, and uh, we appreciate it. If you'd like to talk to us, a uh, telephone number will go up on the screen in a bit, but it's 225-831-1029. Uh, that is a live phone call, by the way, 225-831-1029. Bill, one of the things that was discussed with Leo was this concept of Amazon and Walmart now offering the ability to go online, order your groceries, and just come by and pick them up, or in some cases, they'll even deliver. Mm-hmm. You mentioned that Amazon's having a problem because they're being flooded, and they just can't keep up with the the um, the need. My mom told me a story just yesterday uh, about her experiences with Walmart. Now, what she does is she goes online and she makes her shopping list online, and then drives up, and Walmart just loads the groceries. It's all paid for and everything. Well, the problem here is is when you order uh, with Walmart, if they don't have what you ordered, you get nothing. Oh, they don't go. Well, you know, you ordered uh, this kind of kitty litter, and we didn't have that, so we replaced it with this kind of kitty litter. Just using that as an example, they just it's they just don't there. fill that item. So they make the trip into town to their Walmart, and they get you know half of what they ordered with no replacements. Now, I guess what I'm driving at is for for now, if I have to wear gloves and a mask, I'll do it. But I'm going to go in the store because I may be able to find something suitable for the item that they don't have. Yeah. If I order Cottonelle and it was, we don't have Cottonelle, but we've got Scott Tissue, it's like, I'll take Scott Tissue. Uh, whereas they just, nope, sorry, that, that item we couldn't fill. Just well, you can't know, do I, it. I, I think there's some integrity in their ordering process that's admirable, but at the same time, at, at a time like this where people are a lot more reliant, uh, maybe you should, you know, send them a text message, offer them a substitution or whatever. That, that's kind of time consuming. Very time because I, I don't see any way to do that without a human getting involved. Do you? Uh, of course, no. I'm not a programming genius. Algorithms may be able to handle it, but but I, I'm 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 so tired of their employees singing to me, and I finally put my finger on why. You know, I got this commercial where all their employees are singing "Lean on Me" by Bill Withers, and as you pointed out, they're singing it in about eight different keys. Yep. Well, now they've got the worst singer, the guy who sings in four different keys, who ends it, who does all the runs and all that. Darius. Yeah. And they've got him doing a solo. And it's like, you know what, if you walked into their store prior to all this and you asked somebody where something was, they'd act as if they couldn't speak. And now they're all singing. Yep. <laughs> but I'm, I'm sorry. It's like if the guy was a singer, he'd be a singer. He wouldn't be working at Walmart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like you go and you say, just as a test, go and say, where's the iceberg lettuce? And you get this. I don't know. I'll have to call the manager. No, no. You're, you're actually hearing sounds come out of the mouth. You get a lot of this. <laughs> you know, the best I've had recently. Now boy, you want to sing on a commercial? The best I've recently had, and I, I swear to God this is true. I was in the produce department, and I'm not going to name the store because I don't want to shame the store. But I was in the produce department, and I asked the guy, do you have any baby, baby portobello mushrooms? Okay, this guy is standing... On, in an open area of the produce department, and he literally does this. Like he, like it's going to appear right next to him. And I said, never mind. Marty, do we have, a, we have a caller here? HB. HB. My God, HB. We haven't talked. Let's do that. Hi, HB. HB, How are HB are you? you there? HB. You got the speakerphone on? Hello. There he is. Is this HB from Denham Springs, our old friend? Yes, sir. Hi, how are you? It's been a long time. Well, I found y'all by accident Sunday. 
Well, good. A happy accident. What's on your mind, HB? Just wanted to congratulate y'all on coming back, all three of you. And also to tell you that uh, I thank y'all for what it's worth got kind of a raw deal, but I'm still glad to see you back. Thank well, you. Thank you well, very thank much. Thank you, HB. Tell your friends. I'm, I'm, are you doing well? Are you healthy? Is it good? All right. Stay healthy, HB. Thank you so much. God bless. Take care. Well, there's an old blast from the past. Yeah, and HB was uh, nice super, to hear from super HB. regular on our radio program nice, back in the day. Nice to hear from HB. Uh, the points that were raised about how we will adapt and make what we're going through a new, some kind of new normal, I, I don't want there to be a new normal. I don't want there to be a new normal where we're all used to staying in the house. I don't want to be able to vote by mail. I, I don't want to be able to do, you know, I, I, I want to be encouraged to get the hell out of the house and socialize and, and mix with my fellow man. I don't want to live in a world where we hunker down and we're afraid to go outside. You know, I don't either. But you know what's funny, Kevin, is, and you used to tease me very good naturedly about never being home, never being in our yeah, house. Yeah, I was, I, I never left the house and you were never at home. Yeah. And one thing that we've realized, I mean, we, we do our backyard happy hour thing on Facebook now, and it, it's kind of fun. It is fun. But it, it, it's one, we've realized that we should be spending more time at home, that we kind of enjoy sitting in a comfortable chair or uh, being, you know, out on the patio and, and, and having a little adult beverage or mm -hmm. maybe eating outside every now and then. And, and, uh, and that, that, not that we don't love our friends in the restaurant business and all that, but we've come to realize that we kind of like being at home a yeah, little I bit. Yeah, I think I told you one time jokingly, you got a really sweet house, you ought to try hanging out there. <laughs> <laughs> and we never did. I mean, we were never home. Yep. And on the other hand, I and Mar Marianne and I are never out. I mean, we like going to, out to restaurants and things like that. But uh, other than that, we're, we're homebodies. You know, the one thing I hope we get out of something like this, and we used to get a little of it out of things like hurricanes and, and floods and, you know, big bad storms where we'd have tornadoes. Mm -hmm. I think this, because it's a little longer, it's sinking in slowly. Mm -hmm. I think we need to appreciate all the moving parts that we have in our society that do all the different things that we need done and not be so quick to be offended, not be so quick to throw stones and not be so quick to stick our finger in somebody else's eye. I hope we get a little of that. Hey, coming up, what can you do? What kind of strategies can you take to help protect your money while all this is going on? Helen Graff with Graff Financial joins us after the break right here on Exiles TV. Stick around. Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Experience what the Baton Rouge International School can offer your children. Now welcoming displaced students for short and long-term stability. Hello, 
up, guys? It's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Clarence Bud Show. Yeah, I'm back on the air. That's right, 10 a.m. until 12 noon, Monday and Wednesday, and we replay it Monday and Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. to midnight. Check us out online. You can watch it live at pelicansportstv.com, or better yet, why don't you just download the Pelican Broadcasting app? That way you can take it with you anywhere you go. That's right, the Clarence Bud Show. Tell you what, oh, wait, gotta run, gotta go. Bye. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. This Tuesday, a reminder, uh, if you want to watch us again, and gosh, who doesn't, there's a replay uh, from 10 till midnight every night uh, that we're on the air live during the day. And then there are we replays throughout the weekend on Saturday and Sunday. So check your listings. And for those of you uh, who are watching us uh, on, on uh, Cox Cable 113 or Digital Cable, uh, which is 1013, uh, tell your friends who live in Lafayette, New Orleans, the North Shore, the Florida Parishes, Homa, Thibodeau. Uh, we are on all the Cox Suburban and, and the Allen Cable systems in those areas. So please, tell your friends to give us a watch, and, and hopefully they'll give us a call one day and become part of the show as you have become. And uh, one more thing about uh, how to find us. Uh, you can check out the app, the Pelican Sports TV app, and you can watch the program live from your device. Uh, wherever you are and as far as on demand probably the best thing to do is YouTube and just search for Pelican Broadcasting go to their YouTube page and subscribe and that way you'll get notifications when there's new content and you can watch Exiles TV the Clarence Bug Show or any of the other fine programs on Pelican Broadcasting when you choose we will soon be everywhere there's nothing you can do to stop it we're <laughs> ubiquitous resistance is futile all right so we talked a little bit about the effect that this is having on the economy and of course when the economy is affected each one of us we have our own personal household economy and uh, some of us are take really taking it in the shorts as far as our retirement accounts the fact that there's not cash flow in the household like there used to be mm -hmm. so we thought let's get some advice from a financial specialist uh, Helen Graff is the principal of Graff Financial Services here in uh, Baton Rouge uh, but she has clients all over uh, as, as many people in, uh, of her status do. And, and Helen, the first thing I wanted to ask is, let's just say we can all go back to work on May 1st. Jumpstarting an economy takes a while. When do we see something tangible from that on a national scale? When does the market rebound, for example? Well, what, what do we see? When can we look at our 401ks and our IRAs again? Well, let's start out with um, when we went into this, we were, the general economy overall was on a much better footing than it was going into the 08 09 event. Mm -hmm. And this has actually been one of the longest and slowest recoveries from a downturn on record. Um, 
we were expecting a downturn. We weren't expecting going over a cliff. However, with that being said, the underlying economy compared to a lot of the rest of the world, we've got a good foundation to build on in coming back. So yes, the uh, small businesses are a huge part of the American economy, and those are the ones that have been hurt the worst, the mm -hmm. restaurants and the bars and things like that. Um, but we've all been supporting them, and uh, they will come back. Yes, there are going to be some casualties. Um, and the stock market usually comes back first. It's a, a precursor to what goes on in the economy, usually. We had a little rally after that big, big drop. Uh, how is it doing day to day now, or is it really not even worth keeping up with day to day? Well, it it went down in from the middle of February to March the 23rd was the low, went down 37 percent, and that's one of the sharpest drops on record. Mm -hmm. um, we're up from that bottom now about 30 percent. Well, that's good. So um, one of the things that I haven't seen talked about a whole lot is the computerized and the logarithmic trading that came in. And what happens with that is it forces sometimes funds to sell out, and they'll sell out their strongest positions, or they'll have to raise cash because people want their money out of their funds. So it's kind of a domino effect when that happens. And it's a negative effect, basically. No doubt. Well, it can happen on either side, but it's, it's really worse on the downside. Let's talk a little more about average folks, people watching the people that you deal with on a, on a daily basis. Uh, do we have reason to believe that we're going to recover in a shorter term than perhaps we thought about a month ago? There are so many unknowns to this, and I think we've, we've done two of the three things to get a, the footing under us for a recovery. The third thing remains to be done. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing is the Fed stepped up to the plate and was putting money in the market to help these small businesses stay afloat. Um, the second thing is that the government came out with the CARE Act, also in support of businesses. But the third thing that will really lift the cloud of uncertainty is going to be the finding of a vaccine or a testing that we know, because evidently this thing can be transmitted um, and you not know you're a carrier. And so until we have some certainty about that, big events like, thank God this didn't happen before last year's football season for LSU. Mm -hmm. um, but y you have so much uncertainty with this until those clouds lift. They know more with, uh, I think it was MERS, the one Ebola in Africa. You weren't contagious until you were in the hospital. This one, you don't even know that you've got it in your carrier. There's a lot of things that are scary that are going on that, you know, you, you watch the news, you get a little nervous, you get scared. Maybe somebody you know gets the virus and they get sick and you get scared. And I don't know, I, I'm guessing my household is pretty normal when those quarterly statements come in on my IRA and my four, and, and our 401ks, we get scared. We're, we're watching our, our, our retirement savings dwindle. I mean, should we pay attention or should we just suspend our interest? Take this statement straight to the shredder. It, because in the long run, it's not going to make a difference if your portfolio is built right. If you're in good, solid things, um, th that's what's worthy of holding on to. If your portfolio is built correctly, you know I'm a big Buffett fan. Mm -hmm. And his wisdom goes through these periods of time. And that is you build it right, you keep enough liquidity. And that's the huge part, both on a governmental, a business, and a personal level is the liquidity be, to be able to withstand periods of uncertainty. I'm guessing, just as an example, that there are some big stocks, Fortune 500 companies, that have done quite well. I would think that Johnson & Johnson, mm -hmm. for example. The makers of Charmin. <laughs> well, and also the makers of Band-Aids yeah. and a lot of mm -hmm. your PPEs and yes. your gowns and all that. I imagine they've done quite well. Johnson & Johnson doing as well. Amazon has hit the, actually, 3M hadn't done so well Really, I thought they did a lot on, of PPE. And now, now they're coming back up from that, but they were uh, laggard going into this. Mm -hmm. Amazon is hitting an all-time high. So um, we're going to have changes when we go back. Life isn't going to be the same as it was, but we're always evolving, and some of these things that have already been 
in effect, shopping online, they're going to speed up. Those changes are going to speed up. Do you see companies that had been performers that are now going to be underperformers going forward? There, yeah, there's always going to be that. There's always an evolution in, in companies. And if, if they keep up, if they can be creative, you've got companies like a Coca-Cola. Look at how many downturns that one's been through since the late 1800s. So. Well, and I think Coca-Cola is, is behaving brilliantly right now. Uh, with all of these signs at restaurants that says we're open for takeout and the biggest thing on it is the Coca-Cola Coca logo. <laughs> yeah, distributors have always been good about free signage for the people. But they've the got to be taking it in the, in the throat right now with all the non-Coca-Cola products that aren't being bought at restaurants and vending machines and offices and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's a big part of their business. Mm -hmm. But they're going to soldier on. They're going to be okay. But they've been able to adapt, like I said, through World War One, through World War Two, through the Great Depression. I mean, they're an adaptable company, and that's what you're looking for when you're investing is something. You know you're going to get these periods of time. And so you've got to build both portfolios and businesses and look at businesses to withstand these and can evolve through them. If, if someone is in, say, their last five to seven years of employment before they their targeted retirement, would you recommend that at this point they start changing their investment strategy? Well, if, I wouldn't necessarily sell out of equities right now, right now at this moment if you can hold on another, say, six months to a year. But what I would say is when you build a portfolio, if you know you're going to need cash within a certain period of time, three to five years, that that's going to be in a liquid investment. It might be in a short-term bond ladder. It might be in CDs or some sort of fixed income instrument. But the thing is you want that cash available without, you didn't want, if you needed that cash, you don't want to sell into this type of market downturn. Mm -hmm. But you still need an equity investment because that's the only thing that grows. To hone in a little bit more on my question, what about risk? Should should one consider changing one's risk strategies? As as you need the, and and as you um, as you go into retirement and things like that, yes, mm -hmm. you should take off maybe some of the risk. You risk is risk is a. You need to define it because not all stocks are created equal. There mm -hmm. are some stocks that are more solid than some bonds. Mm -hmm. Bond market is a completely different animal. Um, but there are also some stocks that are highly risky that don't have good balance sheets. So let's define the term risk. It's, it's got different. But do you want everything in the stock market necessarily? No. Well, and, and, and risk is changed constantly by people like Jeff Bezos and Mark Zuckerberg and and, uh, and Bill Gates and Elon e Musk. E Elon Musk. I mean, risk. Twenty years ago, the people who were sitting and holding Abbott Laboratories and Eli Lilly and Johnson and Johnson were saying, ha, "I'm not going to invest with this guy. He thinks he's going to go to the moon and build an electric car." They would have considered him very risky. So mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I don't think it's ever been more of a moving target than it is now. Well, it's always kind of been like that. You've always got your people uh, evolving things and creating new things that you don't think are going to stand up. Look at Amazon. Look at the dot-com bubble, for instance. How mm -hmm. many of those stocks are still around? Practically zero. And yet at the time, could you have picked the ones that would have held up? Probably not. So you don't. If, when you talk about risk, Kevin, yeah, there was a time when I would have invested in Lycos. <laughs> for instance, there you go. And you don't need to do that, but you could still invest with something that's not as risky. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I think we're going to talk a little bit more on a personal level with Helen Graff of Graff Financial. Uh, if you have a, a question, or uh, call in. Uh, we'll be happy to take your question as 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 well as we can. But we've got another segment coming your way, the number 225-831-1029. Thanks for being with us on Exiles TV. We'll be back in a moment. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent with nationwide buying power.
That's right, the Clarence Bug Show is back, along with the exiles, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher. We've put the band back together, South Louisiana's talk team, and it's only on the Pelican. 10 a.m. till 12 noon, right here on the Pelican. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUG. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original cell vet. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. This is Exiles TV. He's Bill Perfita. I'm Kevin Gallagher. Our guest is Helen Graff, Graff Financial, uh, who says basically your, uh, your, your, your first quarter statement from your retirement accounts, just shred it. Don't, don't even look, look at it. <laughs> don't, don't torture yourself. Helen, thanks for staying with us. <laughs> Thank you. It's nothing, nothing but bad news in that financial statement this quarter. Well, and, and of course, I think everybody kind of expects that. But the real, the real thing is, you know, nobody's got a crystal ball, but... What is the best that individuals can do to try to, to prepare themselves for good news down the road? You know, this is not the time to, to go and remember the, the stupid penny stocks thing in the 90s? This is not the time to listen to what your brother-in-law has to say no. unless he's actually doing this for a living and would put his own money there. So what do we do to prepare for better news down the road? Well, if you had gone into this with some cash, and um, and if you had been, I'm a value investor, so what we do is I find it, found it very difficult over the last year to buy anything because things were so expensive. They were beyond my parameters. I really liked some companies, but they were too expensive for me. So I was, by that virtue of that fact, I was building up cash. So I had some extra cash going into this. So as the market was tanking, um, I was buying. And so what you can do in that kind of, and it takes some guts to do that too, but as you go into it, um, and you don't put all of the cash to work, you might put a third or a half or whatever, not knowing where the market's gonna go down again, but you can up the quality of the investments that you're in because now you can get them at much more reasonable prices than you could have on February the 12th. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that's what a value investor is looking for is when the market goes on sale, most people are too afraid to buy. Um, anything else can go on sale, and, and we're shopping and filling up the cart. Well, when bad times hit, it's I think it's everybody's knee jerk is just conserve, conserve, conserve. And you know, it, I, I think that for most people, that includes their cash. 
You know, set well, on your cash. And, and it's panic in sales, too. Mm -hmm. And that's the last time. You don't want to make an emotional de decision when you're investing. You mm -hmm. want to make it rationally and take off. And the market is nothing but here's the actual market price, and you've got um, fear and greed on either side of it. And so you're trying to take that factor out of it. We, uh, we have been hearing a little bit, if you're paying attention to financial news, ever since, I guess it was... Uh, the first week of March when things really went into the tank, we are seeing people that are kind of shocked and amazed that these uh, mega mutual fund holding companies have really, really taken a downturn. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of to be, to be expected because of the nature of their business model, isn't it? Well, that's you've had a couple of things going on. Number one, um, what happens with some mutual funds is that you get fund redemption requests. So you, in order to create the, and they're coming off of a mandate of saying, I'm going to be 96 or 99% invested at all times, where I don't have that mandate. So I can raise cash while they can't. So in order to fund a, when you get this call for cash, people yeah, I cash want out. my money, cash me out. You gotta sell out. And so you've gotta sell out at the liquid ones and the ones that stay in the fund They'll sell the highly liquid, so now you've got the illiquid investments for the balance of the people holding the fund. So it's it, it, it's not obvious on its surface. You have to dig down and find out some of that. Kind of kicks old Dave Ramsey in the butt, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> One thing that Dave Ramsey does have right about these times is we, you know, a lot of us are reduced to rice and beans, beans and rice, <laughs> just because there's no meat in the freezer when you go to the uh, supermarket. That's uh, it's it's crazy time. Let's talk about that a little bit because I I know you watch all kinds of markets, even those that you don't invest in. Mm -hmm. uh, you spend more time b b uh, before a computer screen than a lot of people I know. Mm -hmm. So what happens in terms of the supply side and then the cost when Smithfield shuts mm -hmm. down their biggest packing plant to try to sanitize and maybe they're maybe they're not packing for two and a half weeks? What happens? There's no pork on the shelves. <laughs> And the price of the pork that's and there? there will go up, will go up. How much? Supply demand. Um, I, there may be some, much like we have after a hurricane here, some laws kick into place on price gouging. In fact, Amazon mm -hmm. was, was uh, having some of those issues with third party vendors. Um, so you might get some of those uh, kind of items kick in, but that's gonna take out a huge supply of the pork. So I guess we'll have to go eat chicken. Yeah, or beef. Or beef. So, <laughs> or go vegetarian. What nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> what happens Never now happens. if you're one of the giants in pharmaceuticals, you know, one of these 200-year companies? What happens if you're Eli Lilly or if you're Squibb or if you're Abbott Laboratories? Are you racing now to develop either the, the rapid test, the antibiotic test, anti antibody test, or the vaccine? Is that... Is that your mandate now if you're one of these giant drug I would, companies? I would think so. And I, I think another interesting thing about this, you get all this competition when markets are more normalized. But when you get something like what we're going through right now, much like after a 9-11 or something, you get a unification. And so people are playing nicely together to solve it. If you, somebody's got a piece of science that will work with a process that somebody else That's has, you, you're having more teamwork approach in solving the problem. It's not going to be, oh, look, I've got it, and one company has it, and another company doesn't, because it's going to be multifactorial of what they do. Are, are we going to all be tested going into stadiums with thermometers? Are we, you know, how, how are those things? So there's many different problems to be solved. Do the airlines survive? Do the airlines, are they, wow, where, are they where they were on December 31st? whenever all this gets lifted, or is there going to be a big difference in their paradigm? It took 18 months after 9-11 for them to get back and up and running, and um, it, to the point that they were before 9-11, on 9-10. Um, we will always have these shocks. They will be back. Um, I think back, I flew for an airlines in a past yeah. life, and we had middle seats that would fold down, and the middle seats were barely full. And so one of the cartoons I saw was, let's take out the middle seats and give everybody more room. Um, they had so shrunk the size of the yeah. seats to increase capacity. So there may be some changes like that that you see. And then I think there's going to be another factor. 
is that um, once, like Kevin, you and I were talking about after hurricane, okay, it's time to get out and start doing stuff. I think there's going to be need to, let me go out. I need to get on a trip. I need to do this. Yeah, I need people, to go to an event. People miss vacations. I, I think there's going to be bargains for leisure travelers. But you know what I'm worried about right now is I have seen uh, a couple of national companies saying, out of, uh, out of an abundance of caution, we are canceling all travel through June 30th. Mm -hmm. And some saying through August 1st. So this means that not only the airlines impacted, but the hotels are impacted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the restaurants near those hotels are impacted. Again, this ripple in the economy. And the airlines need the business traveler. Right. You know, That's e the heart of even it. the discount airlines need the business traveler. They need that person in Kansas City calling saying, all right, our company's having a meeting. I need to book about 140 people in. But again, Bill, we know. loop that around to the fact that we've learned to use broadband Internet well, then, to yeah. have our meetings without having to get on a plane mm -hmm. and go to Cincinnati and talk to that client. Yep. You could have him right there on your desktop and have a conversation with him in your, in your home office. And that was already affecting airlines before all this happened. So, yeah, I do worry about about I air think, travel. I think you're, you have a point, Kevin, but I also think, especially in the world of business, there's a need to sit face to face and have a meeting. Oh, and, I agree. And you read that. So although there may be less travel, I still think there'll be a business need for it. Well, uh, you know, for example, I mean, uh, I used to do a lot more business travel uh, when I was in the public relations business. And the fact of the matter is that a lot of these big meetings that companies have or associations have or industries have, most of the business is not done in that seminar room, which you can do mm -hmm. on video. Mm -hmm. It's done during the coffee breaks or the, look, look I need to talk to you one-on-one -on -one about this. Let's go have lunch. Let's go have dinner. And, and so you're still going to need those. But if companies are canceling those because they're worried about a resurgence, or because they're cash strapped because of the partial shutdowns they've all mm -hmm. had now and they look at that as a place to to um to cut the people that want to take a, a leisure trip it's going to be out of their price range because mm -hmm. there is a per mm -hmm. seat mile cost, cost that you can't go below when you're operating that airplane right. and you can thank business travel you know the rest of the time for being able to fly somewhat affordably. The 80 20 for rule, United Airlines used to do lectures on this. They make 80% of their gross profit from 20% of those travelers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting in that $69 seat, you may be sitting next to somebody who paid $469 for their seat because mm -hmm. they just found out they had to go to Omaha yesterday. Mm -hmm. Right. And they subsidize your $69 seat. So it could be, it could be very, very dicey. Helen Graff at Graff Financial, we appreciate your being with us. If someone would like to send you an email with a follow-up question, well, how do they do that? It, uh, for me, it, we, you can use info at graffinancial.com, and um, we'll pick it up and respond to you and see what we can do. All right. More to come. We'll wrap up the show in just a moment. Helen Graff, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Good to see you, both again, of you. Good to see you guys. Back in a moment. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUGS. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original cell vent. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. 
So every year, we get back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Clarence Bug Show. Yeah, I'm back on the air. That's right, 10 a.m. until 12 noon, Monday and Wednesday, and we replay it Monday and Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. to midnight. Check us out online. You can watch it live at pelicansportstv.com, or better yet, why don't you just download the Pelican Broadcasting app? That way you can take it with you anywhere you go. That's right, the Clarence Bug Show. Tell you what. Oh, wait, got to run. Got to go. Bye. TV for this Tuesday. A reminder: get the app. You can you can watch us anywhere in the world. If you get the app, it I know it's in the app store. It's a quick download. Uh, go to pelicanbroadcasting.com in the app store. The Pelican Broadcasting in the app store. That's right. Yeah, you don't need .com. You can stream us live, by the way, at Pelican Sports TV if you want to do it that way, and that's the .com. And uh, also, we're on Cox all over South Louisiana, as well as Allen Cable and AT&T Uverse. So please tell your friends. And for those of you that still like the good old open-air TV, KPBN in Baton Rouge. That's it. VHF Channel 11 or uh, Digital 14.2. Is that right? Yeah, close close enough. Close enough, <laughs> says Marty, our cameraman. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> Everybody relies on, on the cable. And there will be a replay. Uh, 10 to midnight tonight of this very show. Uh, so if you missed something the first time, you can watch it all again. Hey, Bill, in our remaining minutes, of which we've got about five, uh, I thought we might have some fun with filter masks, PPE. Uh, the first thing I wanted to mention, I, I, I meant to scare that photo up and see if Jonathan could put it up on the screen, and for a future show, I'll find it. But it's like a, it, it's like a montage shot. It's like several shots tiled together. And it's a bunch of our fine representatives in Congress all wearing their filter masks like good Americans. Only not a single one of them has that mask over their nose. <laughs> Chuck Schumer, Maxine Waters, Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff. And these aren't, these aren't doctored photos. It's not like somebody put the filter mask on. These, they're actually wearing a, 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 a PPE. And their nose is hanging out of it. So help me out with that one. Kind of kills the whole idea. Thank you. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you is if you've seen any good makeshift uh, PPE while you were out and about and like I, going to the store and things. I have seen some good makeshift ones. I've got what I consider to be a relatively poor makeshift one that I made, but I've I've seen some pretty good makeshift PPEs. I've seen uh, I've seen people do a bandana, and I actually saw a guy on Facebook demonstrate this you take a standard he said this is bounty the quicker picker up or one paper towel he folded it in three mm -hmm. so it's now three bounty stick put that wrapped it in a bandana and he held the bandana up and then used the spray thing use use an aerosol spray and the aerosol spray wouldn't penetrate which mm -hmm. means your cough or your sneeze won't penetrate because let's let's not forget the mask is not for you to avoid the virus the mask is if you got the virus and you don't know it it's so you don't transmit it yeah exactly the mask is to keep you in not them out um and i i thought that one was pretty good um the craziest one i've seen so far is i was at walmart same trip i, I mentioned earlier in the show saw a guy you know like they make the little cone-shaped cardboard hats that kids wear at kids parties you yeah. know just little colored hats and you buy them like four six to a pack and every kid gets this guy had a cone-shaped, it was just a cardboard party hat covering his <laughs> nose and his mouth. And I thought, well, chances are it'll keep your cough or your sneeze in this cardboard. My favorite, I didn't see this in person, I saw a picture, but somebody took their CD 
Norton antivirus CD and put rubber bands on it and they had it over their yeah. face. <laughs> antivirus protection. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be worse. Uh, I've seen a couple of people wearing like professional filter masks that you'd wear if your job were like painting cars. Yeah. That they've got two big filters on the side. Respirators. Kind of yeah. True respirators. Respirator mask. Yeah. But I've seen people like in stores wearing that, you know, with big old eye holes and, you know, scary yeah. looking. Um, the easy, crazy. The easiest thing to do at home is a long sleeve T-shirt that you kind of fold up and then you can tuck the back of it under your shirt, or men's boxer briefs. And I, I, I actually tried it. I made one of those for myself in about five seconds. But I am not going to walk around with Hanes across my nose. No. I am, and, and especially the the service flap on the front. And, just, I, and that's by the way, a if you bad do, message. If you do this at home, <laughs> I recommend you use a pair that is right out of the plastic package from the yeah, store. Use, use new, clean ones. <laughs> you don't want to be. I'm not. No, I'm not going to say that. Okay. Now I swear to God, I actually saw this. Actually, Marianne saw it. Said, "Look, lady, at Walmart, wearing one cup of a bra." The other cup was just hanging loose, but she had a bra over her face. <laughs> and was it a big one? Uh, the same. The same lady was wearing, instead of wearing gloves, she had two sweat socks, <laughs> one over each hand. So I'm gonna give her a B plus for you know, <laughs> for having her heart in the right place. <laughs> but. Um, I've just seen some odd, odd combinations going out there. All right. While we're talking about this, please stop dropping your used gloves in parking lots. Thank you. Please stop doing that. Someone has to pick those up. Um, I count the people that do this among the same people that, you know, they got to change Junior's Dighty there in the Walmart parking lot, and the dirty just gets dropped on the well, and, and remember, It's like, what are you, pigs? Those, those little... Uh, Floss pick combinations, you know? Yeah. And people drop those everywhere. Now there's more gloves. You know, if you're using gloves to protect your hands from touching something nasty, then just ball it up. You know, the proper way, by the way, is one glove inside the other so you don't touch the nasty part that it's touched. And just stick it in your pocket or your car and throw it away just properly. Don't just leave it properly. everywhere. Uh, just the uh, the same aforementioned Walmart visit, the amount of rubber gloves that I saw just laying in the parking lot. Uh, I counted an easy dozen rubber gloves of different colors and sizes and types. Yeah, we're Please, gonna have, don't be uh, pigs. Yeah, we're gonna have a lot more for you on our next broadcast, which will be Thursday morning, including. Uh, we're going to get a good look at how the restaurant industry is trying to survive and get some good projections on the restaurant industry from Stephen Hightower. He is the president of City Hospitality Group and the current president of the Baton Rouge Epicurean Society. He will be joining us on Thursday, amongst other folks. Clarence Bugs in this time slot tomorrow morning in our podcast at 8 a.m. tomorrow on Facebook. Take care.